In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about models and function notation. So the first thing that we want to think about uh, when we deal with any sort of model is how are two variables related? So why do we study two variables at a time? Well, typically, we want to observe what happens to one variable. Let's say, in this case, we'll just generically call it y, whenever you increase or decrease x. So in this case, we notice that as x goes up, 1, 2, 3, 4, we notice that y also goes up, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then we begin to ask ourselves, well, how do we generate, if we call this the input, and we call this the output, how do we generate outputs if we know the input? Well, it appears that my y I can get by taking 2 times the input. So, for instance, if I know that x is 1, then it appears that y is going to be 2 times 1, giving me 2. If x is 2, then it appears that uh, if I double that value, I'm going to get the corresponding y. If x is 3, then I double that value, and it appears that I get 6. <clears throat> so what's the pattern here? So to get y, y is equal to taking twice the value of x, or taking 2 times x. So that's how we usually like to think about models, is, okay, well, how, how are the two variables related? In this case, y is double x. So if you double x, you get y. All right, well, so we also notice that every input has only one output. So that means y is a function of x. We know that from previous sections, and in order to put this in notation, we can basically eliminate all the words and say y is, which we use the equal sign for, a function of, that's where our f of notation comes in, and then is a function of x. So remember, all this means is taking the words and converting it to symbols. y is a function of x. That means for every x, there is only one y. Okay, so now this is a nice notation. This, what does this do? This just reveals to us the relationship between y and x. This just says that x and y are a functional relationship. All right, but this doesn't really help you write the equation. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll condense this down. So we know that, for example, actually before we go there, let's, let's play around with this notation a little bit. So from our table, we know that uh, if I were to ask, to answer the question, y equals f of 2, now normally what I'd say is evaluate y equals f of 2. So what is that asking me? Well, if we, if we notice that our function notation is y equals f of x, that's saying that y is a function of whatever you have for the input. So right now, in this scenario, our input is 2. And if our input is 2, this question is really asking me to basically fill in the unknown. So what is y when x is 2? Well, I come over to my table and I say, ah, okay, well, there's an input of 2, and that has a corresponding output of 4. So to answer this question, I would say 4 is a function of an input of 2. And this all goes back to that idea of the input and output. So the input of 2 links to an output of 4. Similarly, I could ask, for any one of these values, we would say, just as a, a, another little example, y equals f of, f of uh, 4, for example. That's, again, asking us, well, what is y when x is 4? Okay, well, I come over here and I notice in my table, when x is 4, y is 8. So when x is 4, y is 8. So I would write my answer probably like this, to say 8 is a function of having an input of 4. There are, of course, many ways you can state this. Of course, you can show it in the table form. You can express this in an ordered pair format. But this is sticking with the function notation form, which we're studying in uh, this section. OK. Now, similarly, we could ask a question like, um, solve for y, or sorry, sorry, solve this equation. For, or, excuse, I'll change this number. I'll say 6 equals f of x. Okay, well, let's again steer out what the meaning of, of what, this is at, what this is asking for. y is a function of x. 